Native Americans known today years as the Hasine Caddo established a village here on the banks of the Natchez River in East Texas. The location provided access to extensive trade routes and to lands rich with fertile soil, abundant game, fish, and water. This village developed into a major ceremonial center and flourished for the next 500 years. At its height, an elite class of spiritual and political leaders governed a population of 600 to 900 farmers, hunters, and craftspeople. During this time, corn became a major crop. The bow and arrow, which allowed for more efficient hunting, replaced the spear, and pottery was created to serve everyday purposes and artistic expression. As the village grew, three mounds were constructed that marked important ceremonial areas. The burial mound, where community leaders were interred, grew over time. As each generation of religious and political leaders died and were buried, the mound grew in height. The two other mounds were temple or ceremonial platforms used for religious activities and community gatherings. They were also built up slowly over time. All three of the mounds were considerably larger at the end of the Caddo occupation of the site than they are today. There may have been more than 150 houses in the village and extended family groups may have lived in each of them. The location of Caddo Mounds made it a hub for trade with other groups. The Caddo traded bow dark wood used to make bows pottery vessels, salt, and corn for exquisite stone objects, shells, copper, and ceremonial objects from as far away as Illinois. It is not known why, after five centuries, the Caddo political system waned and the site was abandoned. The Caddo lived on in the area, but they were widely dispersed into smaller villages. The mounds remained on the open prairie as a witness to the elaborate social structure of an earlier time. When the Spanish arrived in the area, they used existing Caddo trade routes as their roads through the region. One such route became known as El Camino Real de los Tejas, or the Royal Road of the Tejas Indians, which is what the Spanish called the Caddo Indians of the region. Today, visitors to the site can still walk the remnants of the Camino Real that run within view of the mounds. Much of what is known about the early Caddo has been learned from the archaeological research carried out at the site. The first excavation at the site was conducted by the Federal Works Progress Administration between 1939 and 1941. The High Temple Mound was excavated, uncovering ceramic and stone ceremonial artifacts and the site was recorded as a George C. Davis site, named after the landowner at the time. Thirty years later, archaeologist Deanne Story from the University of Texas at Austin led the most significant exploration of the site from 1968 through 1970. Thousands of artifacts were carefully excavated and analyzed by Dr. Story. The site was acquired by the state in 1974 for preservation and ongoing research and opened to the public in 1982. More recently, new information has been obtained about the village without digging by using a machine called a magnetometer, which employs sensors to measure the strength and direction of a magnetic anomaly beneath the ground surface. The magnetometer is used to detect subtle changes in the Earth's magnetic fields that are a result of human occupation. When we pull it across the site, we're able to use it to map the various activities that have taken place on an archaeological site. The magnetometer has been instrumental in locating hearths, houses, and other cultural features at the site. This data, combined with aerial photography, has allowed archaeologists to generate a clearer idea about the size and density of this once thriving settlement. Over time, Europeans settled and colonized this area and ultimately expelled the native people of Texas from their homelands. 
In 1859, after being displaced for decades, less than 1,000 remaining Caddo were permanently resettled in the region known as Indian Territory, which is now Oklahoma. My name is Phil Cross. I'm a Caddo Indian. I've made both all my life. Despite the disruption of their culture and an absence of written historical records, elements of their culture have survived into the present. Caddo Indians have a heritage of bow makers. I just feel like I'm linked from very distant lands and culture to my current culture as I'm sitting here carving it. And there's no better feeling. Today, the Caddo Nation in Binger, Oklahoma, works to preserve traditional Caddo practices. Although rare, Caddo language is still spoken by a few elders and is also being taught to the younger generation. Hello, my name is Shoni. We are Caddo. Hello, my name is Naya. Welcome. Traditional dances are still performed and enjoyed by the entire community. Potters have recently revived a pottery tradition that was lost for over a century. I'm Jerry Redcorn, I'm Caddo Indian, and my Caddo name is River Woman. A simple but nice display in this museum. Crab apple, maybe olives. Yeah, ginger. Nuts of some sort. Here, a better view of a larger structure's construction. And I think this is the only place uh, that I've seen so far that has this design. Standing just outside the visitor center before we begin our little walk, I'll just pan so we have an idea. There, across the road, is the larger of the mounds. According to this interpretive sign, the village surrounding Cato Mounds was divided into two distinct living areas, one for the spiritual and cultural leaders and the other for the common villagers. The village surrounded the temple mounds and housed the village's spiritual and political leaders. The remainder of the village consisted of smaller, clustered homes, shaded work areas, and farming plots. Really all that we're looking at here today in the area that we'll walk was all the central area occupied by those religious and cultural leaders. Mounds on the other side of the road and I don't know if we are given access to it. It may be on private property and maintained to protect it but not for public visiting. How the temple mound might have looked. 
the large mound we looked at a moment ago. It was originally at least three times its current length and reached 35 feet in height. Spiritual and political center of the village with buildings for worship or government. Archaeological evidence suggests that periodically the buildings on top of the mound were ceremoniously destroyed by fire, then rebuilt on a fresh layer of dirt brought to cover the charred remains. In the account of creation, the first man and woman brought fire, a tobacco pipe, a drum, and seeds for planting into this world with them. All of these items appear in the ceremonial life of the Cato, with fire featuring prominently. Along with the ceremonial burning of structures, at least one village structure may have housed a perpetual fire, tended by the Zinzi, or priest, a feature also common to later Cato groups. During the 1940 excavation, archaeologists unearthed the remains of a very unique structure which they called the maze, approximately 30 feet in diameter. While the exact use of the building remains unknown, its specialized construction indicates it was for ceremonial or ritualistic space. Here we have a, a model, if you will, of that mound. At least I suppose it is. The part we see most is this ridge here, but this area back in here looks like we can see it in the video on the left side, so I'll get in a little closer so we can get at it. There we are. As shown as removed, of course, is what the archaeologists removed and then some point in time replaced. Okay, and then these circular represent, I believe, uh, archaeological remains of posts. In other words, the posts that were used to create these conical buildings. So it's interesting because if you look closely at it, you can see some interesting things. One, varying sizes, this one larger than this one, and much so different there as these two. And there, over interesting because there are some indented portions. Now these may be for those beds or the shelving that we saw in the interpretive uh, center, uh, but then notice this for the entrance into it so that it may have had a more elaborate kind of an entryway than the rest of them. Notice also the size of this one. This might have been extraordinarily large compared to the rest. Here it almost looks as though there is a s rounded square design not to mention one overlaying the other, which would reflect the idea of ritually burning um, and one elder's or leader's building and then covering it with dirt for the next leader, etc., etc.